and let your glory and honor fall on our face, Holy Father, rest in this place, let your glory let your glory and honor fall on our face. Fall on our face, Holy Father. Holy Father, rest in this place. Rest in this place. Let your glory, your glory, and honor fall on our face, holy, holy Father, rest in rest in this. fire fall let the wind blow and let the glory come down let the fire fall let the wind blow let the glory come down let the fire fall let the wind blow let the glory come down let the fire fall let the wind blow let your glory come down and let fire what and let the glory come down if ever time we need the fire and the glory is now is now right now this morning father we bow in your divine presence again I ask to anoint the feeble lips that will cry and continue to cry and anoint 
the feeble ears that will hear and continue to hear and let the earth bring forth let the church bring forth the 100 fold blessings in Jesus name to be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ one must give up everything he or she has let me repeat this to be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ one must give up everything he or she has Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 to 16 let me just read this from the Amplified brothers and sisters I do not consider that I have made it on my own yet this is the testimony of the Apostle Paul I do not consider that I have made it on my own as yet and this is the problem with a lot of us Christians. After we are saved for a certain amount of years, we tell ourselves that we have made it. This is the problem with many churches and many church leaders. After we have built a building and called the building the church and we have some people, maybe... a couple hundred or a couple thousand people we just tell ourselves that we have made it and because of that concept we just stop paying the price of following Jesus Christ and after that we start to follow a building we start to follow a ministry a personality or we just start to follow our religion but we stop following Jesus Christ so let me just read it over brothers and sisters do I do not consider that I have made it on my own as yet but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. There are more blessings ahead for us. More graces. More giftings. But sometimes... We just allow ourselves to be satisfied where we are. We do not want to go further with him. We do not want to do anything more but just come to church. Maybe pay our tithes and relax. But let me tell you this. It is for us today. Woe unto them that sit at ease in Zion. We cannot relax in a world like this. We have to be on the move for Jesus Christ. Because he was on the move for us. And even though he finishes his work upon the earth, he is still working. Do you know that Christ is still working? He ever lives to make intercession for us. We are too relaxed and satisfied in our comfort zone. Hear what the man said. I press on towards the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The heavenly prize the upward call. How can we be satisfied? We must press and press and press. We must not allow ourselves to be contented of where we are with God. 
what we have done for God. Many of us sometimes are satisfied with our past accomplishment. And we make a boast of that. But do you know that one day your past accomplishments will be counted as nothing? It is only what done for Christ will last. And a matter of fact, let me personalize it. All your past accomplishment is a booster or they are boosters to your pride. Notice how people just get proud. It's by accomplishment. You know. But one thing we have forgotten regardless of our natural abilities, our schooling, our hard working, it was by the grace of Almighty God. That's why Billy Graham was right. When they want to build this big thing to remember this great man in Hollywood Billy Graham fought it he fought it right down and he says only if I cannot remember all that he said but he was saying like this only if that which you want to build will remind people that a man by the name of Billy Graham served Jesus Christ Apart from that, it's nothing. It's nothing. Sometimes he seems to be the forgotten man in our minds. The forgotten man, the forgotten man on our agendas. It is Jesus. It is only Jesus. Only him. Because for him, it was only us who for the joy that was set before him endure the cross, despise the shame. It was for us. And now we must live and do things for who? Him. Not for pastor all, not for open Bible standard churches, not for your religion, not for self inclination, but for whom? Jesus Christ. So oh God help us. Help us, my God. So there is something called the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. All of us who are spiritually mature, we must have this attitude. An attitude like Jesus to please God in everything we do and in everything we say. Right? So we see what Paul said there. We see what he said there. Let's look at another script. Because the Amplify, if you look up that whole verse, it went very deep. Notice what our text says. One of the disciples asked him permission to go and bury his father. And Jesus said, let him, let the dead bury what? Oh my God, let the dead bury their own dead. In other words, let the spiritually dead take care of the things of this world. But those who are spiritually alive must do the work of the kingdom of God. Can you imagine this? 
But those who are spiritually alive must first do the work of the kingdom of God. These words are from the very lips of Jesus Christ, you know. So we know that the work of the kingdom of God is urgent. Nothing else must come before it. The work of the kingdom of God is what? Urgent. The fact of the matter is every day people are dying. In the next 15, not even 15, I want to have it correct. In the next three minutes globally about 3,000 people just disintegrate they die about 6,000 babies will be born that's how our world goes for the work of the kingdom is very urgent. This is what we're not seeing. We have saw, saw it in the 70s. We have seen it in the 70s rather. It's urgent. Men used to give up their all to preach this gospel because we knew back then that it was urgent. The call was urgent. The work was urgent. The work of the kingdom is urgent. Every second comes. Even right now as we speak, they just killed about four Christians in North Korea. This very moment. Every day they hunt them down like animals. To kill them in the worst way. It's urgent. It's urgent. We should be having men and women crying out, Oh God, send me! You know, Bible schools, we should be training people to go at any cost. But our Bible schools become a place of making money. Everything today is money, money. All they seen is money, money. Not the souls of men and women, but money, money. So note what Jesus, he told this man, let the dead bury the dead. Oh, God help us. For the person who loves father or mother more than me, does not deserve to be my disciple. My disciple. And then the man went down and he said, the person who loves a son or a daughter more than me does not deserve to be my disciple. Whosoever does not take up his cross and follow me does not deserve to be my disciple. Is who said that? Jesus. Jesus said that. And this does not indicate that we must not honor our fathers and mothers. Because you can read this and you can add up the concept that God don't want you to love your father and mother. God doesn't want you to love your children. God doesn't want you to love your wife or your husband because some have gotten into this kind of mindset but the Bible is filled with commandments note what he says here in Exodus 20 and verse 12 honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land that the Lord your God gives you Notice in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1 to about 3 there. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is what? Right. 
Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long upon the earth. So when you look into the, into the Bible, we have about over 50 something verses that tells us to honor our father and our mothers. And by doing so, it will be well upon the earth with us. So Christ is not saying that. He's not saying dishonor your father and mother. He's saying you have to be 100% committed to me. I want first place in your life. You must love me more than you love your father. Love me more than you love your mother. Love me more than you love your husband. Love me more than you love your wife. Love me more than you love your children. Love me more than you love your job. Love me more than you love your religion. Some people really love their religion, you know. And their denomination, you know. You must love me. Now let us take a very deep spiritual look into the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. He indicates to us in the book of Luke that we have to make up our minds to love him with all our hearts to follow him to be his disciple and nothing must take first place in our lives but him no one must take first place in our lives but him. That is what he's saying in essence. Because he gives us the first place when he hung on that cross. He died for us. He suffered for us. The third day he came out from the grave for us. He ascended for us. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe in me also. In my father's house there are many mansions. And if I go away. He said I'm going to prepare a place for you. you know, Not for me. That's what he said. And if I go away I'll come back and receive you unto myself. And then he had said where I am. That you may be also. Everything he did, he did it for us. Now we have to make sure that we do things for him. This end time church must see God's harvest. Look at Matthew 9. Let me just read about three verses, four verses there from verse 35. And Jesus went to all the tongues and the villages. And he taught in their synagogues and spread the news of the kingdom. He also cured every disease and every sickness. Let's stop there for a while. Now, this is the mandate that Jesus really gave us, eh? To cure diseases. To cure sicknesses. Those of us who got saved in the 70s. That is what we met in the church. Seeing people with bottles of oil. And lines upon lines. And then you used to hear people testify. How God healed them. And you naturally used to see people delivered from demons. Why these things are not taking place again? The church has been commercialized. Everything is chucked to a wrong money. It has become a religious business. 
As a matter of fact, one writer says they have made Jesus a business. But from next year, they're going to pay for it. They have made Jesus a business now, you know. But Jesus gave problems how the Jews tried to do that. And A.D. 70, the Roman general Pompey came and flattened down the temple and killed hundreds, maybe thousands of priests. You notice there was a time in the United States and even all now they used to go in church and just shoot down people. Because we have turned his house into a den of thieves. Every program now is about the dollar. What Christ did when he went into the temple. So all you think I'm mad? I got that mad from G that madness from Jesus. <laughs> he run them out, you know. The man was so vexed. Now, when you read that, you're seeing clearly that Jesus was so vexed, he went in the temple and he says, Do not make my father's house a den of thieves. The man literally lifted up his voice and in rage, he capsized everything. That is what you're seeing today. Everything is because of the money. Because of the money. That's all they see in money. I just say what I want to say. You know. One person came up from Trinidad with some person said in a meeting it was right here that he was to work with a lawyer the madman would have run him and the lawyer just imagine that you see well so you want to claim but I'm like Jesus and the prophets and in the man and you notice what I said. I just one part of it. And write certain things you didn't write too strong. That will come to pass. Den of thieves and robbers. God needs some mad men in his house. Get these suckers out. We need to see souls. Note what Jesus did here. And he went to all the tongues and the villages and he taught in their synagogues and spread the news of the kingdom. He also cured every sickness and every disease. And when he saw the multitudes, he felt sorry for them. They were troubled and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is large. Oh God, show us the harvest. You know, when I look at what is going on in the United States, the United States right now need a mighty revival. The harvest is large, but the workers are what? Few. So ask the Lord who gives this harvest to send workers to his harvest. It's God's harvest. He told them, I want you to pray for workers. And I want to ask you all to pray for workers. Some of you who have been in the ministry class, start a fast and pray and ask God to make you a worker. 